Hello and welcome to my talk. My name is Dipma Abari and I'm leading the computer vision at Mac. Today's session is about how to build a complete AI system uh, that can solve real world little problems. First, we'll go through the challenge that we have, which is the gap between the current AI capabilities and the retail business needs. Then I will introduce a concept, we name it connecting the dots, which help us overcome this challenge. And lastly, in, all, in order to make this uh, session more tangible, we'll go through uh, three different use cases. We will see how using this concept really help us to solve those challenges. But let's start with the challenge. So without getting too much into details, uh, we can see a clear trend in the retail industry of uh, leveraging AI capabilities in order to improve business performance. Trust is one of the leaders in this field and we are using our core technology in order to transform shelf images into digital representation. Just to give you a quick motion on our business, every month we analyze more than 30 million images that were taken from more than one and a half million stores around the world. But what is so unique in the retail environment that makes it so challenging for computer vision? Let's review some of the main reasons. The first and probably the most noticeable reason is the very small variance within the different classes of products. This is no more about the ability to differentiate between cats, dog, and a chair. It's about the ability to differentiate between those totally different uh, six hair, hair color products. Same goes for a very similar shampoo. Um, but of course, in different volumes, it might be one liter, two liter, 1.5 liter, uh, the Red Bull can, and even the toothpaste. So it's important to understand that there, there are no two images of the same product in this slide. So from our client perspective, the upper toothpaste is a cat, and the, and the lower one is a dog. And we have to differentiate between the two. But while there is a very small variance between the different classes, there is a high variance within the class. Here is an example on how uh, Coca-Cola cans might look like in Russia. In this slide, all the images belong to the same product, to the same class. Additional and one of the most interesting challenges uh, that we have in the retail environment is the dynamic shelf life. Unlike static benchmarks, uh, which represent a snapshot of the reality, um, the shelf reality is dynamic. It means that a new product or a new design of existing products often appears on the shelf, which enforces every solution to deal with new classes that it had never seen before quite often. And doing that without having any impact on the image recognition capability or performance. The last challenge is the detection. Obviously, in order to do fine grain recognition, you must have a very precise detection capability. But doing precise detection in a very crowded scene is a very challenging task. So let's sum it up. We have small variance between classes high variance within classes. We have crowded scenes and we have dynamic shelf value. And yet, in order to bring business value to our clients, we have to deliver our data in accuracy level, which is above 96% accuracy. Let's see what is the state of the art in object classification. Then I picked two different benchmarks. The first one is probably the most known and biggest a benchmark is the ImageNet. And if we look on the top one accuracy, we can see that up to date, um, the best performance are 88.5%. And if we go to, to fine grain recognition benchmark, I think Q, the most familiar in this segment, then the top one accuracy will be 90.4. 90.4. So obviously, there is a gap between current state of the art. AI capabilities and the retail business needs. Now let's see how we can 
overcome such challenge. Here I will present a concept um, that help us that help us uh, to over to overcome this challenge, and I guess can help others to over to overcome other challenges as well. So we name it connecting the dots as the game, and I guess that most of you are familiar with this game, but this is very much like like designing such a game, putting the dots in the right location, such that every developer can work on specific dots. But the full understanding of the picture and the full platform capability reveals only when connecting all the dots together. The idea behind this concept is to serve the, the following three uh, components. The first one, is that no single engine or architecture can handle by himself with such a big challenge. So you need to build a platform. And a platform where every engine actually benefits from the other engine's output. This is under the theme of information bringing information. The second component is around innovation. Obviously, when you have a big challenge, you're going to need a lot of innovative idea, but you need to build an environment that will enforce the fact that all those ideas will translate into business value and not be innovation for the sake of innovation. It also can help us um, collaborate between dozens of researchers and developers. The third component is the data quality. Um, we need to ensure the quality and the, and the consistency of, of our deliverables, of our data deliverables, over time in a dynamic reality. And this is a big challenge. So let's see how we use this concept in order to um, deal with some of the little world challenges that we face. So at the beginning, I introduced the very small uh, variance between different classes, and a subset of this problem will be the volume challenge. The volume challenge addressed to a cases where we have the same product in different volumes, in different sizes of packages. For example, for mineral water, it might be 0.5 liter, 1 liter, 1.5 liter, and 2 liter. For toothpaste, uh, it might be a variety of different sizes and so on. Let's have an example on a shelf that of Coke Ford. And we will try to recognize the two uh, products in the green bounding box. So if you will put them side by side, uh, it's pretty much, this, this, they look like it's pretty much the same size and it's very hard to differentiate between them. So let's see how we solve. So first, we rectify the image, so the image will look like Font to parallel, that take it to a second font to parallel. And now when I will put the two images in one next to each other, it's very easy to see that the right one is bigger than the left one. And yet, it's very hard to tell the exact volume. Is it 0 0.9 liter? Is it 0 0.5 liter? 1 liter? 1.5 liter? 2 liter? Hard to tell. So we need to find a way to estimate the probe scale. Um, here we will use a geometrical engine that works on offline and not during inference. And by collecting historical appearances and mask sizes, we can estimate the sizes of every product in our repository. Now, during inference, we will use, it will use all the bounding boxes in the image. And we will also use the information about the product dimensions that we collected offline we can estimate the probe scale. And now the last part is to give this information to the network. So we pick uh, the idea of uh, using a chessboard where every, uh, where the, the, the square sizes are actually represent the scale. And we add it as additional challenge of information together with the pixel to the network. And now the, the network have everything that it's needed for in order to recognize the product in the correct mode. 
The second challenge is the dynamic shelf reality. Um, and this is actually the, a new class problem. It means that uh, it's very often a class that the network never seen before uh, will appear in the image. And we first have to detect that this is a new class and not, and not misclassified as in one of the existing classes. And then if you want to, to learn to classify, then we have to collect more samples of this uh, class and to train an engine which will get which will be familiar uh, with this new class. All this process have to be have to be completed within a few hours in order to meet to meet a business requirement. So let's see how sub part of our system will behave in such case. So we have the product image repository, which is actually images of our classes. And we train our annotators on them. And we have shelf images repository. So we annotate the data, we train an engine, nothing new here. But let's see what's going during in here. A new image arrives. We apply our recognition engine, we have a recognized image. But this is not an end here. We also apply a new class detector. I will explain in more details how the a new class detector was implemented in the next slide, but let's finish the flow first. In case where a new class was detect detected, two things happen in parallel. The first one, we take this sample and we send it to, to the annotator so they will learn it, so we can train them on this new sample. And then we apply a similarity engine, which will help us to find the same appearances of the same classes as they appear in, in the different images. And we'll send those images to annotate to annotation, so we'll have a few more classes. Still, this is a, a very quick process, so we won't have a lot of samples, but we will have a few. And since we only have a few, we cannot add them, just add them to the regular engine training because there will be a very there will be a bias towards a classes with dozens or hundreds or thousands of samples. So we also have a few short learning engines um, that can help us complete it. So as you can see here, we have a multiple processes and multiple capabilities for a variety of technologies. We have a neural network, we have data science, we have uh, embedding space, we, have, we even have, have web. And we can also uh, classify them by their learning methodology. So the future learning and the image recognition engine is supervised learning. Uh, the similarity search over embedding space is semi supervised. And our new class detection detector is unsupervised. So there are a variety of capabilities and technologies. Let's dive in into this new class detection. So how we implemented it? First, we decided that we are going to use the network out, one of the network output metrics since it's more effective from time and money. Then, unfortunately, network gives unreliable confidence on data it never saw before. So we, could not, we couldn't use the confidence. So we had to find different, met different metrics, and we picked the network certainty level. What is this network certainty level? We use a work that was published by Kendall and Yale, and we improve it so it will meet our needs. The first part is taken from the work and is about doing dropout both in training and in inferences. You are doing the dropout uh, during training in order to increase the network robustness and the ability to generalize the problem. And you are doing multiple inferences with dropouts in order to challenge this robustness. And then after you did multiple inferences with dropouts, you can take the mean of the softmax result that you got. And the entropy of this mean will be the network uncertainty. So a new class, a class that the unseen class will have a high uncertainty. The network, network will have uncertainty on classes that it's never seen before. 
and it will have a lot high certainty on classes that it's familiar with. Now the only thing that left is to decide what is high and what is low. And in order to do that, we normalize uh, the process and the results. And, uh, and now you can see a clear differentiation between new classes and uh, classes that and therefore already. The last part, or the last use case, uh, is how can we, is addressing the, uh, the question on how can we ensure the quality and the consistency of the data. And this is because, and this is because despite everything I've presented up until now, no fewer, no few AI system can guarantee 100% accuracy, and not to mention doing it, in, doing it constantly over time in a dynamic environment. We can obviously trade recall over precision or precision over recall according to some business needs, but it will it's, it's not necessarily bring us to the quality that our, our clients are asking for. So there might be cases where, we'll, where we will have to add a human in the inference uh, process, which is, of course, human intervention is not scalable, it's not cost effective, but in some cases, it's a must. Then, what you have to do is to make sure that you are doing it only when you really, really, really have to, only when it's a must. You cannot just waste this piece of So, how we ensure that this is the case, um, we came up with the perfect image notion. We defined a, a perfect image as an image that everything was recognized inside us and everything is at the quality level that we expected for, according to our estimation of course. A not perfect image is an image where we missed one of the products or misclassified uh, according to our automatic QA process. Uh, so, and we trained an AI uh, system, an engine, just for, for this use case. And we sent, well, we sent only images which are not perfect to a human uh, in order to improve the quality and to make sure that it meets the class. So, main takeaway. Uh, there is a clearly a gap between the current state of the art AI capabilities and the retail business needs. Um, we introduce a concept, we name it connecting the dots, that help us uh, to overcome this challenge. And the main component in this concept is the multi, uh, is to go into multi capabilities platform under the theme of information bringing information is to make sure that innovation brings real business value. It's about how you can uh, improve the collaboration between the, diff the, the different researchers and developers. And of course, how we can enforce the quality and the consistency of the data that you deliver. Thank you very much.